everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Hard West by Silver Lynx and Creative Forge Games. This is a board game version based on the hit computer game in which you're going to be playing a tactic style game. You'll be getting certain Wild West heroes and you'll be completing certain scenarios. It plays from one to six players with the single player variant and a team mode which probably could support more players if you'd like. And it has a mode in which you're going to basically be taking your actions for each of your characters then it's going to pass to the next team and back and forth. The scenarios could include elimination, area control, and capture the flag and all that kind of stuff which I'll show you down below in a moment. The game is basically a tactical game in which you're going to be doing some kind of poker match to begin to determine who goes to go first and those cards you'll be then utilizing to play them in which case allowing you to do certain actions like action cards. There's also the player boards which you'll get certain characters that can actually transform into their undead variants if they pass on. Depending on the scenario, they're going to get certain special objectives and abilities. They'll have certain equipment that you can attach to them if you'd like to play. They have a class as well as a type, which is this is a hero gunner. And then they also have the added ability to add certain guns to each of the characters based on the scenarios, which you're going to go ahead and put on the board just like this. Guns will have ammunition as well as reload time and special abilities, whether they be shotguns or rifles or sniper rifles all that kind of stuff each character is going to have a certain amount of luck a certain amount of health speed etc etc and you're going to be trying to gain victory points on the board down below you're going to see a 3d design of the game which is going to come in the game box where you'll be setting up for the different scenarios alongside the board will be basically objective points that you can get throughout the game and at a certain point if you get the most objectives or a certain amount of objectives you'll win the game hard west to which you can go ahead and play another scenario if you'd like that's the basic idea of the game I'll go ahead and take you down below. I'll show you everything that comes in the game, give you a basic idea of how it's played, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review for the game. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have Hard West and most of what's included. There's actually probably some more stuff and I actually have things over here for different scenarios, whether they be churches and whatnot, little uh, pieces that you can add to the game. But as you can see, this thing is massive. This is what I would call a beast of a tactical game. And it uses all 3D pieces, as well as, of course, plastic miniatures for the game boards. Uh, I went ahead and set up for just one of the scenarios, and there's many of them to choose from, as well as over there on the far side are the character boards. They will come with the character and their health, their luck, and their action points. And then, of course, you can attach guns to them which are these little side pieces here based on the scenarios how you're gonna be setting them up it'll tell you all in the book how that works but you're then going to include ammo and all the tokens associated the health will start at max the ammo will start in the middle and the luck will start the luck and the uh, actions will start up at the top each character has its own unique miniature there's a deck of cards over there which is basically your poker deck you'll be doing uh, a five card draw of sorts to begin the game which will allow you to determine if who's going first or not and what's interesting with that is you're going to be shuffling the deck up, dealing out five, and players can reveal whatever they want from their hand, and the person who has the largest hand is going to win, but you can choose to lose if you would like, or not reveal certain cards to your opponent, thusly being able to keep those for later in a specific scenario. The additional character boards and all of the tokens associated with all of the die as well. There's coffins, which will basically respawn areas for the game, and item tokens, as well as a couple other things that uh, are going to help you along, like player aids depending on uh, how far away you are and whether you have cover and whether in the top layer of something we're shooting through rubble. Uh, the game board here is already set up and I have characters on one side and characters on the other side and this over here is where it's set up correctly. You're going to be placing your characters within three spaces of a coffin and uh, you can go ahead and face them how you want. There's going to be tokens on the game board as well and they're going to basically be point markers on each side of the board here is going to be included with a 1 all the way to 15 which is how you can win certain scenarios or completing the objectives and in certain scenarios it'll be like just defeat a certain character like Warren for instance if he dies on the other team you're going to win or defeating a character like that crazy maniac character on the other person's team you're going to be scoring points by going from location to location if you have the majority of characters you'll control that location and if you control all locations that's one way to win the game depending of course on the scenario gathering these stars is going to give you victory points which you'll put along this track here whenever you defeat a certain 
character or characters, you're going to go and put stars on the track as well, and you're basically going to be facilitating your team to advance its specific goal. The scenarios themselves are going to include how to set them up, what pieces to utilize, whether they're going to have the second story or just a small little shack of sorts, and uh, it's pretty much already all set up. We're going to have pieces like these terrain pieces for trees, the coffins, we have barrels, which are interesting as well, which I'll talk about in a moment, gravestones, etc, etc. There's a lot of stuff going on in the game, but the game itself is rather simple. There's just a lot of setup to do in this game. So to begin the game, like I said, you can have a certain amount of characters. You can set up the boards based on how they say, as well as the tokens. Place each character on your side or quadrant of the board, three spaces from the tombstone markers, and then go ahead and begin. The player who won the hand of the five card draw is the one that's going to get to start, and players are going to basically use their movement on the player boards, as well as attack. Those are the two basic actions you can take, and most characters are going to have two actions. And over here on this board here, when you utilize the actions, you're simply going to move them down this track here. When you spend ammo for bullets you're going, uh, for, to shoot, you're going to move it down as well. Uh, the other action you can choose to do is reload, and on the character board itself, it will tell you how many spaces you need to move up on the board. So if I were to do one specific turn, it'd be pretty simple. I could go ahead and move the character one, two, three, four, and five. Based on their movement, most of them are five or six. That would be one action. And then maybe a second action, I can go ahead and move one and two which has some interesting aspects. When you move on a wall, you're going to be able to basically shoot around it. So you kind of got cover, while at the same time being able to shoot in front of that area here. So if you have a character here, for instance, you have a character here, this player can actually go ahead and see that character because he's kind of leaning over and he can shoot. But uh, depending on how you're facing, is going to make a difference as well. Whenever you face a wall, it's always facing the other side. So basically against the wall, the back, you can turn around and boom, boom, boom. After you've used both of your actions for a character, you go ahead and use another character Character. You can choose to mix and match actions, so you can use one with him, one with him, one with him, and then you can go back. But once all of your actions are done, you are done as well. You're also able to save your actions so that if your opponents come into a certain amount of spaces in front of you, your character will get basically a shot of of initiative. So the okay, I see you, I get to shoot you right now. But yeah, so you're gonna be moving around this board here. Uh, some other interesting aspects of the game too is some of these little death tokens. When the, your characters die, you'll be placing death tokens on the board. Additionally, there's certain scenarios that will give you certain bonuses when you walk on them. Generally speaking, it's a health bonus of sorts. Uh, another thing to note is as an action you can shoot. So if this character here had an extra action to shoot, you would actually go ahead and count the number of spaces based on whether or not that other character had cover and whatnot. And you'd look at the tracks that they give you in the game, these little boards here, and it tells you, okay, what's the number of chance on the gun? Uh, do they have cover, half cover, a window cover, or floor cover? And then what zone and how far away are you shooting from? And then you're going to roll based on this specific track here. So if you are, for instance, nine to 10 spaces away and they have half cover, you're going to be trying to roll a 19 plus, which can be very difficult on a 20 sided die. Additionally, characters are gonna have a luck value of probably two, in which case, when you get attacked, you can use luck, roll the die, and if you get a five or a six, you're gonna do deflect certain damage or re re uh, reduce damage. Five reduces one, six will actually reduce all damage. If you don't get hit, you're not you're you're going to uh, not gain luck, but if you do, you will. If you shoot and miss somebody, you'll gain luck, and if you shoot and hit somebody, you won't. So luck can be very valuable in certain circumstances, but it's still a two out of six chance to do anything, and one out of six to completely avoid an attack, which is very very useful and definitely should be something you should consider. Each character is also going to have their guns, which will have special abilities, whether it be a poison ability or a scatter shot, certain things that can maybe push back opponents and whatnot. All very useful, and in addition, there's going to be cards in the game and these cards here you're gonna get five of them to utilize you'll be doing that poker game like I said at the very beginning but these guys will do certain things as well like for instance precision where you get to add one to your range this turn or transfusion choose two characters of yours and you can exchange their life totals and if you can see over there on that board here so for instance if I go over here uh, this character has six life let's say he only had three you can go ahead and exchange this health with this health when using that this specific transfusion card. It's, it's fairly useful. Uh, then you're going to have stuff like disguises. So there's disguise tokens in this game, which is really cool as well. They look like these little things here. And how that's going to work is pretty simple. Basically, if your guy has action, he's going to move, you can go ahead and take disguise tokens based on how many they say. And one of them will be a real 
movement and one will be, well, some will be others will be fixed so if i wanted to i can say okay i'm going to move this character off the board and then i'm going to move maybe one space would be here that could be where i am or another space could be here and uh, then your opponent's gonna have to try and figure out which one is actually the character so you'll basically be able to disappear in a puff of smoke and if they get you bam you have to reveal yourself uh then of course there's stuff like let's see if i can find the other really cool ones uh, there's ones where if you are a scavenger, you can actually remove certain tokens from the game board, giving other characters life. And then there's ones where if your character passes on, you can revive them at a coffin and they are now able to fight once again. And of course, when you lose a character, the opponent's still going to gain victory points. But that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're going to use all of your character's actions until they have none left. Then your opponents will go ahead and use all of their character's actions and back will be on your turn. You'll refresh everything and then you will continue moving, trying to achieve the objectives of the game, whether it be trying to score some of my victory points to get to 15 or whether it be just to eliminate a specific character from the game board. And if that character goes, you win the game. There is quite a few rules as far as combat goes. Like I said before, if you're against a wall, you're able to shoot around it. And if you're outside, not in cover, you can't shoot across walls. Being above certain things, so if you're on top of a level, like for instance, if you're up here, you're going to have a bonus to range. You're also going to be harder to hit. There's walls that will have holes in them, and you can go ahead and shoot through them. But there's, of course, a cost to trying to shoot through a wall with a hole to hit somebody, which is very likely to miss, especially the farther away you are. And in addition, there are barrels. And these barrels here are cool as well. So if you have a range of, let's say, 10, and you're here, and you want to shoot at an opponent who's here, normally you couldn't do that. But in this case, you can go one, two, three, hit this barrel, four, five, six, seven, and then you're able to hit that character character as though the barrel was line of sight so you can kind of ricochet bullets from one side of the board to another utilizing the barrels as your specific ricochet targets and that's pretty much the idea of the game hard west if you've ever played the video game this board game functions very similar to the board game and of course it has the setup to allow you to play as though you were one of the characters in the game itself with all the special abilities of all those specific characters with some of course unique differences as well anyway let's go ahead and discuss the game and I'll give you my review of it and uh, tell you whether or not you should go ahead and pick up this game currently on Kickstarter now Hard West. So let's go ahead and discuss Hard West and the first thing I want to talk about before we get into my review is a couple caveats. One being that the rules are not final for this game so there's a few little questions I had regarding line of sight for certain things like whether or not you're going to have cover behind a tree and is that different than having cover behind for instance one of these gravestone markers and how much this is going to be explained in the book and there is quite a lot of line of sight rules in fact it's about half of the rule book currently unless they try and condense it which I would probably suggest they do and give further examples as well as when you're playing your poker hand you're gonna get those five cards right and you can do a you're basically playing five card draw but you're going to also then be revealing cards from your hand now for instance I might have triple aces a nine and a queen here but maybe I don't want to reveal that I have three aces in my hand because then they're gonna to get to know what I have in my hand and that will determine how they're going to play against me so maybe I'm only gonna reveal two aces which may still beat them or not I might be giving up the ability to go first but I'm also not gonna be giving up any cards in my hand you can even choose to lose and that is a viable strategy to the game as far as the poker hand goes for the most part though that is pretty much it for the game as far as explanation it's pretty simple actually there's just quite a lot of things regarding line of sight that uh, as well as the setup that's going to go into it so let's go ahead and talk about the uh net we'll go ahead and talk about negatives first in the game the first thing that may be considered a negative to certain players is the setup of the game there are a ton of pieces and they're going to be set up based on each of the campaigns and in fact the setup might be almost as long as the game itself or fairly close you're going to be setting up stuff like this putting together the entire town which is a huge town and it looks like a full 3d town this reminds me of an entire games workshop area which in my opinion is actually really really cool but of course certain people are probably not going to want to set the game up just based on the fact that there's a lot to do well when you're playing with multiple players that might be so bad maybe you have each player do a house and then it would take quite a uh, quite a bit less time but for the, those of you who are solo gamers expect to basically be setting up an entire town for for each specific scenario so uh, it's a somewhat positive somewhat negative really just depends on who you are specifically for those solo gamers out 
there. Just expect it. I want you guys to be aware of that. Um, additionally, for this line of sight, like I was saying before, you're going to have to check the rulebook quite frequently to see when you do and when you don't. And eventually, you're going to understand how it functions, realizing that, of course, when you're fa how you're facing matters in this game, and not only that, but if you're on the back of the wall, you're able to go ahead and turn over and shoot, unlike other players. And then there's, of course, the attacks of opportunity when you don't spend your full action points and tells you over here when you don't spend them, if you save them, you can have an attack of opportunity on a player who's walking in front of you. There's certain rules in which you can go ahead and shoot the player in the back and you'll get bonuses to that as well. Uh, but those are pretty much my main little complaints for the game regarding how you're going to be having to set the game up and the style in which you're going to have to learn the uh, the basic range and the uh, sight of, of the specific game. When, and I think that also has to do with the fact that it's a full 3D board. Okay, so let's talk about the positives. And the first one I want to come to, even though it's a small part of the game, is the hands that you're going to be getting to use throughout the game. This little poker game is really cool because it gives you the ability to give information to your opponents or not at the advantage or disadvantage depending on how you want to play the game really cool and they're all unique cards as to how they function uh, speaking of the cards there's certain cards that give you disguises which are these little tokens here disguises are cool because they give you this kind of weird uh ability to kind of put yourself in more than one place which can confuse your opponents and make them try and shoot at the wrong thing it reminds me of like specter ops and when you're trying to move around and hide yourself from your opponent it has that and it feels really good with the theme of the game the really another really cool aspect of the game is the different guns that you can attach to your characters and how they work there's a certain amount of bullets you're going to start with in the game which is normally right in there in the middle which is good because it allows you to have to refill your gun if it started at the very top it's very unlikely if you need to refill so it was a good choice to do that. The characters and their ability to not only um, have their luck and whatnot, but also certain ones will die, while other characters, if I can find one, are actually going to be able to come back from the dead. I guess they're all over there. But you can flip over the board, and it'll give you their undead side, which changes how they play as well. Another thing regarding the characters is luck. Luck is used by rolling a six-sided die, and on a five, you reduce one, and on a six, you don't take any damage at all. You don't get a lot of luck, and the only time you gain luck is when you're unlucky but you're always going to want to use it to avoid taking that damage because you can basically take lethal by two or three guys in one turn if you're not careful but if you're utilizing your luck correctly and you get lucky on the rolls it's going lucky on the rolls you're going to be taking less damage which is nice as well and the characters all feel different in how you're going to want to play with them along with all the weapons of the game and there's quite a few weapons in this game and you can attach them how you want i always like custom customizability in tactics games and this has that the 3d board is really cool this is all a prototype right now this entire game is a prototype. It came in this big box, and I just started putting it all together like Legos. And I'm a Lego type person, I'm a Minecraft type person. And so setting the game board up is a lot of fun to do, to just try and get this whole house set up. As well as the fact that you can kind of make up your own scenarios in this game. If you know, all you need to know is the base rules and the base setup for um, any of the scenarios. And you can make your own board design. And it allows you to do that along with giving you different pieces and whatnot. Like I said before, there's a bunch of extra pieces we didn't even use just to show you the scenario, including these trees and whatnot and how they all will give you certain abilities. Being able to be on top of the buildings will let you have certain range that will help you uh, will help you hiding behind certain areas. So I actually hid behind a wall that happened to have holes in it and I didn't think about it. And I'm like, wow, that's so thematic because it's like I'm a cowboy and I'm running behind this thing. I'm like, okay, I'm safe. Oh no, I'm not. There's a hole in the wall. It's likely he can shoot me. So he runs up behind to go to shoot me. Oh, but he's 11 spaces away, which means he's pretty far away. He is in range, but I'm behind cover. So it's very likely for him to hit me. So he rolled and he got like a 16, which wasn't even enough because because he was too far away and so I noticed that happen and I had to move my character the next round which provided a lot of theme in this old west style game not only the disguise tokens as well as the unique death tokens as well being able to when they when your characters pass on placing these down they'll give you certain bonuses to health and whatnot certain characters can revive characters utilizing their death and whatnot on the board there's the coffins which can be used as respawn markers which allow you to kind of customize your board and then the added and on effect of these little victory point tokens just being scattered across the board on each end where you're controlling different portions of the board and you can win via the basic objective of the game board or by taking out a certain character or the fact that you can go ahead and just collect certain pieces along the board as well as gaining control of certain areas and being in full control is a good way of winning as well of course like any other tactics game once your character is passed on and hasn't they, does not have the ability to revive you get less 
uh, you're staying less of a chance of winning. So if you have one character and your opponent has four, it's very likely that it's over for you, in which case you could, could just simply surrender, knowing that it's no longer going to be for you. But you always have that uh, opportunity to win throughout the game, and you can still come back if you have two characters and your opponent has four with careful placement, really smart decision-making skills, utilizing your luck when you need to, and of course, making sure that you're close and make the best out of your attacks of opportunity. It has a lot going for it. This game is a big packed monster of a game and it shows you on the campaign what you get for what you're paying for and if i remember correctly you're getting quite a lot for the low cost of the game i highly suggest you take a look at this game if you like tactics games just simply for the style and the grandiose nature of this game when you see this plopped on the table at your local con or at your friend's house it's something you're definitely going to want to jump in and play because it just looks so cool and it functions really well like i said before the only one thing is you have to be willing to want to set the game up and that's going to be for a very specific set of people but otherwise hard west does a really good job of it another thing to note is the game has a video game to it as well and that game th that video game actually holds a lot of weight to this game here if you like the hard west video game this might just be one, one thing that's an instant buy for you because it plays very similar to the board game, the video game with a few interesting changes as far as line of sight goes and whatnot. I did a little sampling of Hard West myself and it's a fun game as well. So go ahead and take a look down below in the description if you're interested in partaking in Hard West, a very tactical Western style game with a unique, slightly morbid theme of fighting against demons and uh, reviving people with as the uh, as, as the uh, what's it called the guy who digs the graveyards and whatnot you, you get what I'm saying though there's there's all that in there as well anyway that's pretty much what I got to say let me know what you guys think let's go ahead and hit the outro for the game all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube like subscribe and comment and hit that notification bell button it helps us out greatly and we greatly appreciate it as well as taking a look at the game hard west I showed you it all before this is, of course, a prototype, and rules are subject to change, but what is there is enough for us to go ahead and get del delve deep into uh, the game itself. And I think you guys, who are tactical players who like tactics video games, are going to be rather impressed with this title. Go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We're giving away the game called Joust for Fun. It'll be up for another week or so. You can go ahead and win just by liking, subscribing on YouTube, as well as sharing out those specific campaigns. Also, go ahead and check out our live stream. We live stream every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. PST on Facebook and the Unfiltered Gamer Facebook page, where we will show games just like this one, played with all the Unfiltered crew. It's a lot of fun. We give a ton of games away, and I hope you will join us there. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you around, cowboy. That was a good impressive impersonation of a cowboy, I think. All right, guys?